Hello and welcome to the preview show. This week we look, we look ahead to the Parsons People Monarchs matches against the Red Card Bears and of course we face the Scunthorpe Scorpions at Armadale on Friday evening. Joining me to preview this week's matches is Monarchs Reserve Mitchell Davey, of course co-host on the preview show at the team. Uh, Mitchell, it's been a wee bit of an eventful week for the Monarchs uh, just to look back over last week's match at Armadale against Ipswich Witches. Uh, good win in the end, we sent them back down the road with no points, three points for the Monarchs, which was hugely important uh, in the race for the playoff spots, but it came at a price uh, with, with Mark getting injured. Yeah, definitely. You didn't know, we didn't didn't want to have any injuries, you know, for our own team. Um, you know, again, it was a quite a quite a tricky track, tricky conditions. You know, there was unforecast rain that came down early, late in the afternoon, so it made, made it a bit more difficult, but. You know, thankfully we were able to get the job done. You know, maybe a bit of luck on our side, but that doesn't matter. It's speedway at the end of the day, and yeah, just happy to get the three points on the board. And you know, the Ipswich are a really, really strong side who are in in the chase for the title as well. So um, yeah, to send them away with nothing was vital. Of course, uh, just as we mentioned there, Mark actually suffered a hand injury. Uh, I think he broke a cut, dislocated a couple of fingers and ripped a couple of tendons. Of course, uh, was operated on early, early this week. Uh, but the Monarchs were Mark looking scheduled to be out for up to six weeks. Uh, the Monarchs promotion have took the decision uh, to replace Mark with Monarchs asset Theo Piper, a man hugely experienced around Armadale. Uh, He's really, he's, if his replacements go, Mitchell, um, I think this is a pretty safe one for the Monarchs. We, we know what uh, Theo is capable of around Armadale, and I think with the wave fixtures that we've got coming up, he's hugely experienced around those tracks as well. I think this could prove to be a shrewd move by the, the man, management. Yeah, I think I think they've they've looked at the uh, the upcoming calendar, and you know, for the time being, that of what marks out, what tracks we'll be going to, and yeah, you always know what you get with Theo around Armadale. Um, so you know, I'm I'm pretty certain they've looked at all the all the options available to them and and decided that was the best move. And you know, hopefully our run of results can continue and or you know even improve. And yeah, with Theo, you know, oh he takes the yeah, the mantle of the uh, oldest member of the team now takes that <laughs> off myself. So I'm I'm a little happy about that. But yeah, no, um, you know, he, he's got you know vast amount of experience, so you can't really complain, can you? Absolutely not, and for a man like that, just to be sitting on your doorstep, it, it makes sense, really. Yeah, that's it. It's you know you can t you can tell they've put the thought into it, the management. So you know if they felt this this is the best move, then you know we're all going to roll with it, and you know hopefully we get the results to prove you know that the, the management have made the right call. Uh, for those of you who need reminding, uh, uh, Theo's uh, capabilities around Armadale, we've got a race now from years gone by. Heat three from the inside, Joseph Tabaka, Josh Groshonek, Theo Piper and Alex Davies. Piper away well, Groshonek with him. And Davies goes flying inside uh, Tabaka there and he's up alongside Piper. Piper just managed to fight him off. Showing a lot of determination there, Theo. Now Tabaka's back. Rebels pair going hard. Davies making a mistake there, and Tabaka's into third now. Gershonik challenging Piper. This is an interesting race. Oh, Gershonik making a terrible mess. That bend, and that's allowed Tabaka to get up the inside of him. All sorts of problems for the riders. Gershonik now trying hard. Cut inside Tabaka there. Final turn of a very eventful heat number three, and the Monarchs finish on a 5-1. I'll be very pleased with that. Great determination from both the Monarchs there. Piper early on, and Tabaka taking advantage of a few errors by the visitors. Very impressive indeed. Uh, on, on Thursday evening, uh, Theo will be lining up alongside Sam Masters at 1 and 2, Mitchell, uh, with a new riding order coming into play, and of course, will be at number two for Friday's match as well. Um, Sam and Teal one and two. That looks very a very strong one and two. Um, that you would expect points to come through there, wouldn't they? Yeah, definitely. You know, um, a lot of the time, the the start of the season, it was, you know, a lot of, a lot of time we were just getting three eaches or something like that in the in the opening heats. But you know, with Theo's experience and you know knowledgeable head, you know, hopefully himself and Sam can pick up some massive five ones home and away. Uh -huh. um, and you know, it really gives a boost to the team 
time to kickstart the points. Uh, obviously that means that Max is going to number four alongside Derek. Eric looks to have had a wee bit of form recently, um, certainly getting out of gate a lot quicker than what he was perhaps a couple of weeks ago. Um, but is it t obviously it's time now, Max started the season in the main body, but it's time for him to show his reserve form in there as well, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. I think Max has now found his feet, you know, he, he seems a lot more happier, a lot, lot more comfortable on the bike. and. You know, and it's same same with Eric. Eric's gone back to the way he looked for those opening meetings of the season, really attacking it, really, you know, really, really pushing hard. So, and that's when Eric's at his best. So, you know, if he can continue doing that, and Max just keeps going from what he's what he's been picking up in reserve, then you know it should should help. Um, I don't know, keep keep building. You know, and no no backward steps. Just keep pushing forward. Of course, Max seemed to be a wee bit unlucky on Friday evening. There was a couple of races where he's maybe just get picked um, in the last lap and not passing somebody. But his real weak point, even at reserve, was his gating really, wasn't it? Yeah, I'll, to tell you the truth, I, I, I didn't get a chance to I watch a lot of his races and, and things like that. Um, but um, it's, it's, it's a tricky one, you know. Last last week's a bit hard to judge by. There wasn't you didn't have use of the usual inside run and we all know how much Max loves that so you know with with the tricky conditions it did make it a bit more difficult and you know didn't have as much passing prowess I guess as what as what he normally does um, but yeah I know he's working hard um, you know me and him we're parked beside beside each other in the home pits and we we bounce ideas off each other every 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 meeting so you know we're looking to, to help rectify each other's problems he's helping me sort of on track and if I can if he needs help gating I'm, I'll try and help him out and my gating's not the best but it's uh <laughs> it's something I'm working on at the same time trying different things so you know it's it's what it's all about we're we're acting as a, as a real good team unit so as we mentioned it uh, that we go and visit the red car bears on Thursday evening and as we said before Theo will be in the lineup for that match on Thursday night uh, earlier on this evening Graham Muncy caught up uh, with Theo as he looks forward to making his Monarchs return hey, so we're joined here on the Monarchs TV show by by returning star Theo Piper Theo glad to be back yes definitely you know it uh, was a little bit of a surprise but um the surprises are always welcome and obviously, um, you know, maybe squeezed out a little bit at the start of the season with averages. You know, have you been keeping yourself busy though? Have you been riding quite a lot? Yeah, I've been um, I've been riding quite a quite a bit abroad and um, just keeping myself in the game, you know. So um, the, some some GPs have done and some international speedway meetings. So yeah, I'm, I'm quite busy. And obviously, when I went to the sort of middle of June, were you maybe starting to think that that call wasn't going to come and, and British speedway was going to pass you by this year? Well, I wasn't really busy with it at all uh, um, with the, the UK Speedway here because uh, I was just such a, a disappointment on the beginning of the season, of course. But um, now uh, now we're just uh, back in the game and uh, I'm really happy. So, And obviously, right back into the thick of things this week with two matches, mm -hmm. uh, starting at red car on Thursday. Is that a track you enjoy? Yeah, definitely. Um, I like the, the right red car. So um, uh, I normally... Uh, do quite a, a few points there, so hopefully I can do the same for you. And then on to Friday, uh, back at Armadale against Scunthorpe. Is that a match you would expect the Monarchs to win? Uh, well, I hope so. You know, uh, I'm in the team now, so I need to. We need to perform, and we need to win. And, and you mentioned coming back at the team. Obviously, it's a team that's that's going well. Um, they're sitting top of the league. Does that make it easier coming into a team with a good vibe, or, or is it just your job to show up and race regardless? Uh, well, I hope uh, everything goes well uh, for all the riders. You know, um, it's a team sport, so uh, if the team wins, that's, that's definitely a bonus point. And obviously, it's been maybe a few years now since you last rode for the Monarchs. I mean, the, the guys that are in the team just now, are there many of them that you know well? Have you ridden with any of the guys before? Yeah, I quite know them all. Um, so, uh, should be any any problem. You know, we we get on all, okay all the time. So, uh, so hopefully, uh, we'll uh, we'll bend in nicely and what are your expectations I mean obviously I think in the, the short run it's looking maybe like a short term deal until it's marked back is this something where you're just looking to sort of, you know get a few extra rides and make a little bit extra money or is it something you're hoping to put yourself back in the minds of the, the rest of the promoters on British Speedway yeah definitely you know uh, of course it's, it's good for, for uh, coming back uh, even if it's short term uh, uh, just to, to do my job uh, what I love you know uh, everybody uh, likes to ride speedway uh, who's in the game so um, 
yeah, and hope hope put myself in the shop window if if uh, if I can uh, ride the, the season out somewhere. And obviously, we've mentioned already it's a club that you know well, and you've been for many times. So you know, are, are the family looking forward to you back to the deal? Are you looking forward to you know all friends? Yeah, definitely. You know, I had a lot of messages already, so um, so uh, it's all all good and uh, heads up. You know. Perfect. Well, thanks very much for your time there, too, and all the best for the coming weekend and for your spell back for the Monarchs. <laughs> no problem. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's uh, Gary Beaton, Tail Piper, who has eight, David Howe, who has ten, and Matt Cornelius. So David Howe needs a win to get on to 13, which equals Rory's line. But Piper, once again, making that inside line work quite well. And he's eased his way alongside her again. Now he's just trying to get into an improved position. But Piper, once again, the way he won his previous race, he's doing exactly the same thing again, and it's working. Just picking his way around that inside line. How though this time, a bit quicker around the outside. Piper trying to come back again. How not quite sure what line to go on. And look at that, Piper's got through again. Like a team riding demonstration. Once again, how goes to the front. Where's he going to go this time? He's looking for that inside line. But Piper's on it again. And Piper's going to win. Oh, incredible. <laughs> well, that's quite a remarkable line Tears found there. And David Howe just couldn't block him out. I think, personally, David should have gone for the outside more often, but uh, an amazing ride by Theo Piper. He's moved on to 11, and I think that should take him into the semi-finals. So, as we mentioned, Mitch, we go to Red Car on Thursday evening. Uh, Red Car, one of the sides, as we spoke about only a couple of weeks ago before they visited Armadale, um, very good, very good side, Charles Wright, Ben Barker, Jason Garrity. They've got a lot of entertainers in there, if nothing else, uh, but a lot of guys that can score points in the reserve. They've got a fairly, well, a very good reserve in Cody Garcia. Um, this is going to be a tough match for the Monarchs, but we've got to go there at least competing for a point because we need these points on the road now because we've raced quite a lot of home matches. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's you know, everyone knows that, you know, you can win all your home matches but you still need those points away. So, you know, you've got to be going there targeting, targeting to get those points. And like like you said, Red Car are a team of like real racers. So, you know, you can't you can't go three laps 100% in the last lap 80% because they, those boys, they won't give up. So, you know, we've got to be sort of head down, holding hold it wide open until until the chequered flag and, you know, make, make every point count. Of course, Red Car, a, a former club of yourself as well in 2013 before you came back into the Monarch side. Um, are you looking forward to coming back to Red Car? Yeah, it's been, been a few years since since I've been there. Um, I did. I think I, I, after my injury, that was the very first race meeting I did, returned the injury after. Uh, return to racing was at Red Car against a very strong field and I, I was out of my depth at that time um, but you know I always like going to red car it's it's always been a sort of a nice nice track in that so hopefully you know we get good weather good good track conditions and yeah we can go and try and take advantage of what I learned there when I was racing for the I think I did a 28 day stint there so. <laughs> yeah of course uh, ahead of that match we spoke to uh, red car team boss Gitendra Duffel uh, as he looked forward to that match um, so, just going back, obviously, we spoke a couple of weeks ago, just before your drop at Armadale, um, and you were saying one of the main things was about getting a, a full one to seven back. Of course, on that night, the injury bug struck again, um, but looking at it, just waiting on how, how Jason was today, you're potentially going to have a full one to seven again this week. Uh, we were hoping so, um, but Jason pulled out of the British final on Monday. So, um, it's looking doubtful again, unfortunately, which is frustrating for us, but you know, we, we can't help circumstances. So, uh, if, if Jason's missing, then we'll be looking at booking again. And is it still the, is it the hand injury that's still bothering Jason? Is he still just the healing process from that? It is, yeah. Um, we, we were told yesterday it's a suspected broken scaphoid, but Jason's going for x-rays tomorrow morning, so we'll, we'll know more then. So I'm going to be with Jason all the best, obviously. Um, apart from that, you know, looking at the team, um, obviously some Edinburgh fans may, may shoot me for saying this, but my star of the show on Monday night was Ben Barker. Um, it's, you know, some form he's carrying just now. Yeah, he he was spectacular at, um, at Bellevue 
and you know he he's been riding like that all year. He he's been superb and mm. um, it's certainly put himself in the shop window for a few Premiership teams because he deserves it. And um, you know it 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 he did himself proud and he did Red Car proud as well. So he was a good night for us. And then going back to the obviously the Red Car team as a whole. Um, Lindry Bugs hasn't really slowing you down too much last week. That was another good strong run against a, you know, a reasonable and good Newcastle team last week. Is that something that can boost a bit of confidence, you know, with a run of fixtures ahead? Yeah, um, it, it was a, it was a tricky one really because you know Newcastle on paper have a really good top five, but I'm not sure whether we were that good or whether Newcastle were just underperforming really, but. I think it, it demonstrated just how important good reserves are, and that's certainly something that we do have, particularly with the return of uh, Danny Ayres. So, you know, we we are pretty strong in that department. Hopefully, Danny can hit the ground running when he he comes back on Thursday. But, um, you know, I think you have quite useful reserve as well in Josh Pickering, and I, I suspect that our track will be somewhere that he'll like because. You know, a lot of the Aussies like these fast tracks, and although ours is a pretty small track, it does ride pretty big. And you know, he's, he's a potential trump card, so we'll, we'll need a good performance from ours too again, really. Yep. And then, obviously, looking at the league table just now, you're still sitting just outside those playoff positions, but you know, it's only the halfway stage, so you, you're hoping that those playoff positions are still well within your grasp as the season progresses. Yeah, I mean that's the target. It's um, it's fairly early days still, but um, you know the top four at the moment are starting to to pull ahead of everybody else. So our job now is to to really put as much pressure on as we can, and I think we're going to have to pick up a few points away from home if we if we really want to make the playoffs and uh, certainly keep a you know a solid record at home too. So this is a good opportunity for us to take you know three points from from yourselves and. You know, just start climbing the table a little bit, but you know, we as well we we know too well. Um, you know, in, injuries and and things out of your control can strike at any time, and that's when things can get really difficult. So you know, if we can keep the lads fit from now on, and uh, you know, we we just gotta hope things play into our hands and and just keep picking up what we can. And, and by the way, the, the league structure is this season. Um, obviously, you've already been to Armadale twice. Um, and, and obviously two victories for the Monarchs. But does that put a little bit of revenge? Does that add a little bit to the fiction on Thursday? Or does it just get viewed as the guys need to go out and do their job and beat whoever's in front of them regardless? Yeah, I mean, we want to win every meeting anyway. Um, you know, there's always bragging rights there. You know, we've, you've beat it twice now. And it would be nice for us to be able to take some points, you know, uh, off you as well. But, um, yeah, it, every every match is as important as the other. Um you know, and it really doesn't matter to me, you know, about bragging rights, you know, coming out of the table if we're in the playoffs, it, it doesn't matter how we do it. So, um, yeah, mm-hmm. it, it, it doesn't really matter who we race. As we mentioned, the Scunthorpe Scorpions visit Armadale Stadium on Friday evening as they look to come and put maybe dent the Monarchs' playoff charge slightly. Uh, but the Monarchs, looking at it on paper, Mitchell are huge favourites for this meeting and huge favourites to take three points without conceding. Um, but is there an element of the guys can't be complacent? They've got to go out and earn the points? That's a massive, massive thing. You know, they can't be underestimated. You know, they've, they have a team, again, full of races. So... You know, we, we can't go in too relaxed. We have to go in focused, get the job done, you know, get the points. Um, until those three points are on, the, on that league table, you can't relax. You've got to, you know, get the job done. And, yeah, hopefully after coming off the match at th- on Thursday night, going into Friday, you know, we, we should be all warmed up, all ready. And, you know, just hopefully if we can get a get a couple of points at uh, red car we can keep the role going obviously the track was very difficult on friday evening the guys prepared prepared the track for i think it was about three o'clock it was in perfect condition then the rain came just something that wasn't forecast at that point it caught it's caught the track staff out caught every day out really um hopefully uh, the forecast plays plays ball for this week for everybody concerned uh, and we get a good race track this i mean because if they the racetrack's good, there should be some really good racing on Friday. And that's it, you know, the, I think everyone could see how, how much more difficult it made it last Friday, you know, with that, that weather, you know. I I didn't even know that, well, I didn't see an ounce of rain until 
I was on my way through to the track and uh -huh. and yeah I knew that wasn't forecast so when we got to the track and we'd seen how much water was was already that fallen there you know it changed things considerably and but yeah the the, the beautiful Scottish weather plays ball on Friday we um hopefully take advantage of it you know with a good racetrack and yeah, produce some good racing. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, Armadale said it's plaudits for being the, the best prepared track in the country in the past. Um, a lot of riders rave about Armadale, the preparation. I mean, it's never the way it was last week. It's never like that. You know, it's it's never inconsistent. It's always, a, a lot of riders might not like the, the shape, the size or whatever. What riders always say is it's consistent. You're never going to hit a bump that's unexpected. But we've seen that last week for the sheer fact of the track staff get caught out, really. Yeah, that's it. It's it's something you can't prepare for, especially if the forecast, you know, was for it to be. I think it was to be cloudy. There was not not one ounce of rain forecast. So it's it's one of those things. But e even in in a sense, the track last Friday still was very consistent. It was pretty well the same the whole way around. The only only time is when it starts getting a little more difficult is uh, when all the all the material on top starts like moving out and you get sort of the wet icy underneath base coming through. But you know that happens every every speedway track. You, no matter how good you are at preparing it, it's always still going to come through. Um, and it's just you know riders adjusting to it um, and and ride, riding through it. Basically, yeah, it's 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 just some changing lines, changing setup. Um, and yeah, still, you know, the easiest way is to attack it. No matter, no matter what you do, the the more you think about it, the harder it's going to become. Was that a bit of a learning experience for some of the guys in the in the team? I mean, they probably never seen Armadale like that. I don't know if you've ever seen Armadale in that condition. What it was Friday, but perhaps maybe the likes of Josh. I mean, can only get to the guys a world of good because you can you you're able to see the track in a different light, so to speak. Yeah, Josh. Josh had mentioned that he'd never seen or had to ride in a track track conditions like that. So. You know, for him, it's all learning. You know, I've I've come across it many times. I've been over here long enough now to know that uh, the the Scottish weather or the British weather in general, you know, can throw throw those little things at you. So you got to be prepared for it. But it, it it changes a lot, and a lot of the time, you'll find it changes riders' mindset as to mm -hmm. to how they ride the track. So you know, it's it's a difficult thing to do to keep the same mindset when conditions aren't you know 100% like normal but yeah it's it's one of these things that you can you can either think about it or you can just get on with the job get it over and done with and you know all us boys on on Friday we we got on with the job and and, and got the points needed thankfully and you know didn't spend too much time thinking about it or over overthinking about it so yeah, it's a it's a it's a good thing, but it's also when it's your home track, it can catch you out and give yeah. advantage to the away team. So, it was a, a, good, a still a good result for tricky conditions. Is it important now that we get a consistent track like, for a couple of weeks on the spin for the guys, so that we can build up some sort of home advantage? Because now we're going to start seeing teams like Scunthorpe, like Red Card did a couple of weeks ago, who are coming for the second time this season, won't catch them out as much. But if the home guys have got a consistent track we can be count and know what they're coming to would would that help the home advantage situation yeah that's like the the track has changed quite a lot um this season you know we're, we're trying to find something that works for, for all the riders on the track and you know trying to find that balance where you know we can all race it and be happy with it and and know that you know we can go into every race thinking that we can beat the opposing riders no matter who they are or what number they ride at or you know what their credentials um so yeah we're still sort of playing around with that a bit um but when oh well i think a lot of the track teams that were at the track earlier in the year it was a lot slicker so with the uh the amount of grip that's that's been on it in the past couple of weeks you know it's, it may may play to our advantage that then it sort of un unsettles yeah. them rather than <laughs> Rather than let them have think they got a good setup the last time they were up. So. Yeah. Uh, just to look at move away from the monarchs for a couple for a couple of subjects really. Um, last night we were recording this on Tuesday. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so last night uh, we seen um, Rassie Craig Cook crowned uh, British champion. I was down at the National Speedway Stadium to witness it. Absolutely fantastic night. Brilliant racing. Um, obviously Craig, a guy you've worked with in the past, I believe. Um, He's a guy that obviously is held close to the hearts of Monarchs fans. 
um, after three years in the spin, he finished runner up. He kind of deserved this this night, didn't he? Yeah, definitely. That's what um, you know. I, I, I raced with Cookie, and also, you know, I got got a mechanic for him a few times and and helped him out. And you know, he puts so much effort into into doing his best that not only at every meeting, but especially when it comes time for the for the big ones and the British Championship is something that he's wanted. So, you know, to see him win it, you know, couldn't be more deserved. You know. He, He's definitely put it put in the hard yards, and you know he's definitely taken the right steps forward. So hopefully he has a good one at Cardiff and puts his puts his mark on that international stage. I said that, I said last night before the meeting started that um, Craig's now won two rounds of the GP qualifiers. He's now the national champion. In my opinion. He's done enough to earn a wild card into the, the Grand Prix. I mean, there's people, again, in my opinion, I think there's actually riders got, got wild cards for, for achieving a lot less. Um, we know the GP Challenge is out in Russia. Perhaps maybe a top six finish there would, would, would almost guarantee a, a wild card spot. Do you think Craig's now at a stage? He's a pretty late developer, <laughs> if we're looking at it. But do you think Craig's now at that stage where he could handle been on a Grand Prix series. It's 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 a lot of preparation, you know, you see obviously the money and outlay that those boys put out, you know, to race the Grand Prix. Um and you know and well, they have a lot of league commitments as well. Um but I think if Craig was given the opportunity, yeah, he'd be more than a hundred hundred percent ready for it. He would make sure he's got all the right right pieces to the puzzle in place and and you know, make sure it's as, it's as easy as possible for himself you know not as not as tasking but going back to the wild card thing knowing Craig I'm not sure he'd be happy to get it on, on a pick you know he, he likes earning his spot and you know there's there's no reason why he can't go out and earn, earn you know the right to be there mm -hmm. you know do come through the ranks you know he's he's definitely on form and but I, I know I realise that but some of the some of the top riders I mean Ty Wiffenden had to rely on a wild card pick and out won the world championship the next year so I mean it, there's no disgrace in accepting a world card no, spot no, in there that's but, definitely I, it. but I think as well even a even a good performance at Cardiff could probably guarantee it yeah you know, like that semi-final spot really that's it that'll be his, his next target you know it's, it's setting goals for for Cardiff you know coming around you know next month so you know he'll be working hard knowing Craig he'll be testing a, a million and one things <laughs> um uh, Possibly Hope he doesn't overthink it. To no, no, he's, he's, got, he's had enough experience around Cardiff now to kind of know what to expect for the crowd, for the track, etc. Yeah. So th there's probably that added expectation on him this year to maybe do a little bit better. But as we've seen from the Grand Prix series, it's not something we often talk about uh, on the previous show. We've seen for the Grand Prix series this year, it's fairly wide open though. That it's there's a lot of riders in there with a lot of opportunities to kind of make semi finals and finals. We've seen wild cards do well. Uh, Vaclav Milik in the last round, um, but obviously you still get the kind of top guys that are right up there challenging. That's it. It's you know it's more wide open than than ever. I think you know you, you you can't go back to years when there was just you know maybe two or three dominant riders dominating a lot. It's there's so many young boys coming through now that have so much speed. Maybe maybe a little on the wild side. It's great for entertainment. Probably horrible to race against for some of the boys, but. Um, yeah, you know, you can't. I don't think you can, you can go to a Grand Prix lineup and and predict predict a final for certain. So, mm. you know, that's Cookie said last night. Put the put the cat amongst the pigeons is what he kept saying on TV. Uh, so, you know, he's going to be aiming to do that. Um, you know, a lot of people might think that you know he's, he's just a wild card, but you know, he'll know that he's he's there to race and like the the other 15 boys in the championship they're there to race and score as many points as possible but yeah he has the the luxury of it's it's not he's not worried about a series he's just focused on that one event mm -hmm. i see a new feature involved here have you a uh, gp preview show with the hank yeah i see it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not something we often if the fans about. want it we'll, we'll, we can do it yeah uh, we're going to go from one level of the sport the very top to the a level that um we're going to be hosting a national league uh, event we announced it this week Mitchell of course yourself is going to be taking part in the Caledonian Riders Championship uh, which will be at Armadale on the 30th of June this month um, 
you're looking forward to it. We've got a strong field, obviously. This is the National League, a level a level that you can kind of bully, yeah. so to speak. You're up there with one of the top riders. I mean, we've got Dan Bewley, Mitch, uh, Mitchell, yourself, that'll be you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Liam Carr and Max Clegg involved. Um, get these. You guys are kind of up there with the top riders in the in the division. Um, but would, is this an event that you would look to be winning? Is it is is a home rider? Oh, it's the same. It's you know any any race I go into, you know you want to win it. You know, that's what you're there for. Um, so yeah, to to have sort of a, an individual championship. You know, of riders based based around that national league level. Maybe you know just pushing into main body in in championship you know it's it's sort of gonna be vital you know again and it can it can also help like for me personally help my confidence around armadale you know my results are a little a little up and down so you know if you, you can have a good meeting from that hopefully you know it, it can transfer into your racing and at championship level and but yeah it's a it's a strong strong field you've put together um so um so yeah no, looking forward to it and you know, it should be a, it should be a cracking night's racing, and uh, you know, I, I think it's going to have a really good feel to it, and hopefully, it becomes a, a yearly event. Thanks very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, we do still have our hospitality packages, uh, and we've still got sponsorship packages available. Of course, you can sponsor a race uh, for forty pounds. Uh, that will entitle you your hospitality package, including buffet, soft drinks, match day program and entry for two people into the stadium and if you want to upgrade that for an extra £10 uh, you can get alcohol for the the evening <laughs> up in the hospitality unit it really is uh, worth its weight in gold that one uh, and of course you can you can still sponsor riders uh, that costs £25 as well uh, the spot the heat sponsorship and the rider sponsorship is going fantastically well so if you do want involved that I would suggest that you get in contact with us as soon as possible or head over to the website where you can book your tickets and book your hospitality packages there uh, as we say that takes place on Friday the 30th of June a week on Friday and we really we've got our fingers crossed weather wise we get good weather weather and um, as we say we wanted to make this a, a family event Mitchell so we've got lots of things going on for kids uh, so make sure you come along if you know somebody that's never been to Speedway before this is a perfect opportunity for them to get involved and um, with perhaps a, a cheaper way of getting into the Speedway of course uh, uh, if you buy, buy tickets online it's only £9 for adults uh, and all kids under 12 go free and um, so if you head over there you can buy your tickets for uh, the event as well of course even if you're paying at the gate it's still only £10 for an adult so for a speedway meeting match all these days in 2017 it's a bargain and we do think it's going to be an absolutely top event just say hopefully it goes well and the weather pays ball for us uh, and we can have a special night at Armadale Stadium that's it you know hopefully me or, me or Cleggy stand on the uh, top top step at the end of the evening that would be real nice you know for the for the for the home fans and for the, for the club but uh, yeah hopefully you know the the entertainment on track and and off track is gonna be gonna be superb and of course we're going to rope a couple of monarchs into a couple of q and a's after it in the bar and we'll have the top three in the bar after the event as well of course adding a wee bit to the event as well um but just to look ahead again as we said uh, we face the Scunthorpe Scorpions on Friday evening at Armadale uh, but now we're going to look back over uh, meetings going past with Scunthorpe as we take a look at Mike Hunter's blast from the past
big thanks once again to Mike Hunter for his blast in the past. That's almost it for the preview show, but as as per usual, if you head over to the, the website now to buy your tickets for Friday night, you can get your tickets at a discounted rate for the Parsons People Monarchs match against the Stuns Scunthorpe Scorpions on Friday evening. Of course, that's a half past seven start. Uh, but until the Friday focus at the weekend, it's good night from me. Good night from me also. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>